So uh, where are the Asia Pacific youth? Can you raise like your hands? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, not bad. What about uh, Europe? Okay, and then uh, what about the uh, Africa? Cool, and they uh, like you by Jeff. Aha, did I miss any region? Did I include it all? <laughs> okay, cool, since we have many of you from different part of the world, that's great. Um, so I guess we are, are we projecting the... Uh, Indeed, for the PowerPoint is already uploaded to uh, the remote participant platform. Could you, uh, could the technical people just help us to show this on the screen, on the slide? Yeah, cool. Um, to start with, thanks, Janice, for the introduction. I, I'm David, also from Hong Kong, um, mainly organizing um, the coordinator of Lab Mission Ambassador Program. Um, welcome you all to join this session. This session is for uh, youth coalition on internet governance. Um, to start with, I briefly introduce what, uh, what youth coalition on internet governance is. Uh, started in 2009, um, this coalition has been established in um, the IGF, uh, which is organizing uh, Egypt, the Egypt one. Uh, after that, we are doing uh, different kind of stuff to promoting youth to be engaged in the internet governance stuff. Um, for uh, our criteria, we want to recruit uh, people under 30 to enjoy uh, the time to be here for the discussion, to engaging more people and the youth voice uh, to be heard and to uh, know about the internet governance. Um, indeed, we, we, uh, in these few years, we also like to run different kind of program. Um, I would like to show the other slide to you. Um, because for last year, we got, uh, we got different plans um, for um, how we can engage more people, young people in, in a sense. Uh, for this session today, um, yeah, for this session today, I just talk about, briefly talk about uh, the agenda of the day first. Um, for the first part, as I've mentioned, I will share um, the working report of what we have done in last year. Um, and also we have some activities have been done in this uh, IGF Brazil. But in the other sense, because how we can make things to be, um, to run smoothly, we need to have uh, another uh, steering committee to be, to be established in, in a sense to make things going on. That's why we would also like to talk about uh, the chapters things and also um, discussing among us to, to see how the steering committee of YCIG should be because it hasn't been very clearly stated in our uh, chapter. I think because for IGF or, or, or uh, the nowadays governance stuff, we, we would like to have an open mindset and which is open for everyone to contribute and, and to see how thing is a very uh, transparent way to run. That's why we would like to set the other second part of our program for today is uh, doing some kind of consultation and hear what you think uh, the youth coalition should be. Um, last but not least, because uh, for next year we still got uh, I, uh, I, IGF properly. I think hopefully it should be got another IGF. Um, we still need to plan for our next uh, IGF activities uh, to engage more youth. That we will need you guys to contribute your ideas and how we can make better. Because for this year we have already done a few new stuff like um, uh, like uh, the IGF ABCs for newbies and also some youth makeup. Uh, I will mention it later on. Yo, so for some updates for what we have done last year, uh, in last year report, um, we proposed to doing some few steps on, on YCIG this, for this year. Um, the first, very first one is uh, about, uh, because of the y, YCIG website is really pretty old, uh, we would like to have some modification on this. Uh, the second one is we, in the last meeting, we think it's important to get a, uh, one day one youth get together event, it's an informal event to, to uh, let everyone to meet up. Um, for the third one is about send youth speakers to different panels. That's why um, not only on those things like child online protection things, but also to all different kind of topics uh, that are related to youth. Um, the third one is about the youth survival kit in IGF. Um, the, the, uh, the fifth one is uh, 
the iPad is formed to share youth engagement things. Uh, the fourth one is forming a advisory group uh, because, as I've mentioned, uh, the membership of Lao um, is like uh, to have youth under 13 to join uh, the YCIG, but we really like to have um, people in senior age to giving some advice on, on how we should run. Uh, this is somehow proposed the ideas for last year. Um, you know, it's the link. Indeed, you can also check on the internet for, for our report last year. Uh, I mean, uh, the report of session report for last, of last year. So now I would like to talk about and share about some achievements we have done this year. Um, for everyone of you, I think you have seen this postcard. Uh, this post postcard is uh, somehow like the ideas of doing some survival kit for uh, the newbies in IGF. Um, um, you can check from the website. Uh, the website got some ideas on how uh, internet governance is and those kind of uh, meetings, what is the meeting is about, and, and those kind of introduction to both internet governance and IGF. Um, if you really like to have this, it is shared on your tables, and if anyone got it, you can, you can just uh, go to the website to see it. Um, in the other sense, for promoting YCIG, I would like everyone of you to uh, keep track on our Facebook. Uh, which is Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, you can join our group. Um, oh, we were doing some kind of discussion over there, but at the same time, we are doing discussion in mailing list. Uh, for the mailing list link, I will share with you guys at the end. Um, so this is uh, the very new initiative we are working on that we would really like to keep this to be open to all. Uh, when you go to the website, you can see the other link, uh, which is a, a a Google document. Uh, we would like everyone to contribute to uh, to um, to make this be live, um, keep this sport to be running. Uh, because I think not only one of uh, two kids to be done in in a sense. It's important to keep everyone to be uh, on the track to to see which angle you think is is important or anything is missing for the survival kit. Um, just go to our website and everything is on there. And for the other event we are working this year, we was work this year is about the youth mentor, mentor youth meetup. Uh, thanks Bianca for uh, for doing some coordination work. Uh, Bianca have also in touch with some MAP members to join our session. Uh, in our session, it's like around 40 youth attend in uh, the youth meetup. Uh, for the ideas of youth meetup is somehow very similar to the ideas of uh, doing day one informal meetings uh, as we have planned last year and as we have proposed last year. Um, the feedback is quite good. We are still thinking of how we can do for next year and maybe some modification is needed. Um, we will leave your feedback and, and we can check about this later on for um, the way uh, the way for session. Here come some pictures. Um, for the model, I think uh, it's good to have some meet up with some senior members in, in IGF. But it's also very important to, to provide a channel for youth to meet with each other. I think for last night, uh, the Latin American youth do a very good job on organizing a beach party uh, on the beach. It's very enjoyable. Uh, it's the other kind of informal meet up we enjoy most. I think it's more, most of us like it. So I, I I would just like to run across for everyone for hosting this awesome event last night. We do get a very good time there. <laughs> so maybe you guys got another in, in, informal event you can just share on the Facebook because I think most of us is communicate through Facebook uh, and also in the mailing list. So just put every awesome thing on the Facebook. Uh, we keep on track and probably we can join every meeting. Uh, I mean to join every parties. Yeah, and for the other stuff I would like to share is about the Facebook group. Uh, it's newly created last time. Um, P 
PTSD is mainly mainly communicate through the mailing list. The, um, based on the discussion outcome of last year, we think it's important to have some informal channel to share the stuff. Um, it's grateful that we have already got like uh, 250 line members to join the Facebook group. If you like, you can also join the Facebook group and we can do more discussion on Facebook. Facebook. I think here the end of my um, report of what we have done last year and we have done in this IGF. Um, for the second part, as I've mentioned, I really like to have everyone contribution on, on, on giving your collective uh, wisdom on how uh, the YCIG should run, um, mainly on two things. Uh, the very first thing is about the role of our steering committee, because it still need to have a steering committee to, to make everything things running. Um, the other stuff is about the procedures and the timeline. What does that mean? It is about uh, the selection process for for the steering committee. Um, because on on uh, the chapters, it's happened at least very clearly how the rules is. And I think because uh, for the chapter is already uh, written on on 2009, I think the time has passed and it need to have some kind of update to make. Uh, things to be more efficient way to be run. Um, here comes some reference material we like to discuss. Um, you can go to the link uh, for the chapter and because we are now having some kind of consultation uh, period is running on, uh, you can go to the pri private tab for um, the comments. Uh, I will pass the time to my colleague Yanis to uh, moderate the discussion. Um, may I have Yanis? Oh, actually, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, if you, well, if you're on WebEx, actually, um, then we can share it out in the chat. Or, or actually, if you click www.yciig.org, you can, you can start, uh, you can sell it online then. Can we just actually show it, show it here in the screen as well? But before we go into the discussion, I think I just want to say this setting is not really right for us. I think we should need a U-shaped table next time, like a round table. So even though we're sitting here, we were not really like, um, we were just helping to, to start a discussion. So uh, we need every one of you to really contribute and raise your opinion. Uh, it meant to be really open and interactive that we are hoping this section would be, because um, we are trying to really uh, get more youth voice together and not just like uh, from, uh, some of us or so we're trying to get uh, everybody to to really work together um, and also just want to add to what David mentioned about Facebook group I think it's a good to outreach to your friends as well so please invite them to join but then I can uh, we really still hope you can join the mailing list as well so that we can keep all the discussions and uh, on email archives so that we can have better record as well and I guess Can you make it a little bit larger, perhaps? <laughs> okay. So actually, if you have your computer, oh, ping, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, uh, Pim from uh, Dutch RGF. Maybe in the meantime, to make it to do a suggestion to uh, organization in general, whoever that is, uh, that uh, for the social meetups, it will be really beneficial if this meeting is actually in uh, totally at the beginning, because then everyone sees each other. We suggested that I suggested that last year as well already. Yeah. Because then the meeting was on Friday, so it's really good for everyone to be able to see each other on the first day. So. So we moved you know one day can. earlier this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we, we were, Bianca was trying to help us to do that in the agenda, but yeah, so I, I guess we can keep advocating that. Yeah. That's a good suggestion.
Uh, okay, so yeah, on the screen actually, uh, it's right now we're showing the charter that was created uh, when this group was actually uh, initiated way back in 2009. And there was uh, in Article 1, it outlines that we need a steering committee to be formed by three elected members, 40, uh, 40 chairs and vice chairs. Um, and only individual members under 30 years old and limited number of representatives of youth organizations can be elected. Uh, so with this, actually, uh, we have mentioned in the last year that since we, we are lacking a steering com uh, an official steering committee right now, so we are pretty uh, loose in a sense uh, that we, we kind of uh, volunteering basis to like get things uh, going. And then, so we would like to really uh, formalize the steering committee this year and then uh, trying to and then trying to uh, make the transition with the previous uh, previous founders of this uh, YCIG group better. Uh, so I guess uh, that's that's why we are doing this election discussion here right now. And so this is this is the background. Um, so I guess, uh, so that's why uh, we have created, uh, actually we, we have a uh, regular calls before uh, open uh, in the Facebook group chat that we invite you to discuss about that before. So we have opened a draft uh, in a power pad that David just mentioned. So maybe we can just go to the, uh, so I think today we, we need to, we need to uh, discuss, uh, the first thing is the road of the steering committee because right now in the charter, it didn't really outline what is the responsibilities of this steering committee. So I guess since we have so many uh, different voices here and different you from different parts of the world, I, I guess we would like to, as a group, to see what do you think uh, from your perspective that uh, the steering committee should have? I mean, what role of the steering committee members uh, should have uh, in this uh, group? And then how many of them do you think is needed? Is it just chairs and vice chairs? Or do you think we need some more people to be on the steering committee to, to make sure this group is like really have projects and working? And I think Pim has the hand up. Please. Yes, thank you. I think it's very important that there are at least from uh, from each um, uh, continent or zone in the world there are some represented since we, if you're a youth coalition, you also have to be a coalition of all youngsters from all over the world. So that's important. And I'm, I would suggest to keep it to five or six maximum because that's in general the most workable number for people to meet as well. Okay, uh, hello everybody. I could be stand up so everybody can see me. I'm Flo Florian from uh, the UFIHF and representing Europe. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, sit down again. Um, I don't think it's necessary to to define that um, we need you from uh, every continent or every region because that's something we cannot guarantee. So it it may be the case that at some point there is nobody who from one region, for example, from Europe, who wants to be um, on the steering uh, uh, committee. So I think it's it's risky to say that this is a necessity. But I definitely agree that like um, um, five members, five to six members, is a good amount to have a, um, a representative group of people. Hi, this is Mubashir from Pakistan. Uh, I've got a suggestion. Uh, instead of having uh, just uh, uh, regional committees, we can have a, a central steering committee and then the regional committees under that under working the, under that uh, uh, global steering committee that can be a suggestion any anybody else pim and um maybe for uh, florin again uh maybe david or you uh, can first uh, clarify a little bit about the steering committee because we're now discussing about a, a, a group of people and how they should be and how many they should be but wh what is the purpose what is what is the function what what, the, what should it do so maybe we can first talk about this thank you for the question um i guess we're also referring to the chapters for the things um to be confessed i'm not very fin not that familiar with the chapters in a sense because i'm not not that long period of time engaging, I'm just engaging three years ago uh, on the stuff. So I think um, just referring to the, uh, the chapters, the steering committee should get some responsibility to organize different kind of activities and represent the groups uh, as I'm just reading uh, the documents out. 
um, in order to promote accountability and transparency on and all documents minutes from the steering committee meetings, discussion uh, decisions we will publish at the YCIG website. So it's very unclear to, to say about what the steering committee should be. Um, but in the other sense, we would like to uh, guess to forming a, a youth a coalition in, in IGF need to be at least three people from uh, different stakeholder group. Um, I think for the one who established this uh, YCIG, he just want this to be done and to be established at the very first beginning. So I haven't think about how uh, the steering committee should be and is it just for the administration role? Uh, it's also banned the accountability to, to organizing events. Uh, so I think in the sense we need to discuss what is the role uh, of the steering committee. Uh, this is just um, being the secretaries of um, the whole coalition but not making those kind of decisions. Um, they will be very open and and how we can form this as a, a more, uh, with more representative way. So I think is uh, the discussion of today um, for, the for, for, for this part, uh, meaning on how, um, how many people should be in the steering committee uh, and also on what things to be done for this steering committee. For example, I think, um, for, uh, let me make a very, um, uh, very simple example. Uh, for the, every meeting, I mean for every YCIG meeting, IGF, at least someone to host the meeting. Um, is it uh, the responsibility for steering committee to host a meeting? They should set up the agendas, and before setting up the agenda, they, sh they should doing some consultation with members. Uh, this kind of stuff should be discussed for this time. Hi, I'm Felix. I'm from that mission, and I'm from Hong Kong. And um, regarding the role of the steering committee, I think that um, in the charter, it's way too broad and unclear on what it should do. And I think that the primary thing that the steering committee has to do is to lay out specific goals for the year. Like, instead of organizing activities, they should um, specify what kind of activities they want to hold and where, and just to have a specific year plan for, for the rega uh, regarding that year. So. Pim again uh, from uh, uh, Jeff. I would, I think I agree with you in the sense that it would be good to have a specific year plan, uh, but it needs to be voted in and and um, approved by by all members. I would say of the Facebook group or of the uh, of the coalition, in a way. And <coughs> because you mentioned the charter being vague, which I would say that the, the first thing that the steering committee should really do is make that more clear and come up with a proposal to clarify the whole China, uh, China. Florin again. Um, I don't think that the steering committee should, should do anything of that. Um, I wanna, um, maybe you're familiar with the structure of ICANN. Uh, they maybe call it board, but it's somewhat similar. And I heard uh, here today Steve Crocker saying, uh, they're just doing what their community is telling them. Sometimes they have to take leadership because it's a rather big organization compared to the YCIG, but um, I think the, how they, um, uh, how's it called, the paper, um, the charter, thank you, um, should be designed by the community via the mailing list and not by the steering group. Hi, uh, this is Haley from Hong Kong as well, and I agree with far more because I think like the steering group should not do any like proposing or like uh, decision making because like I think we should like all of us can like be the m like s the one to suggest and propose should be us instead of the steering committee. And I agree that like five to six people will be enough, but uh, I think that like the steering committee should consist of every uh, like at least one representative from each continent. It's Felix again. Um, if we let the community speak for themselves, then some bigger groups will have a bigger voice, and then it is possible that some smaller groups and minorities are being left out. So um, maybe because of language barriers as well. So I think that steering committee has a role to equally address the the interests of um, different groups across different areas and different interest groups as well. Um, from now on, I will stop uh, saying my name to save my time. Um, no, I don't. I cannot agree. 
Ah, it's for the record, okay. Um, uh, Florin again. Um. <laughs> uh, no, I, I cannot agree because it's that's that's the way how uh, a democratic process works. If there are more people agreeing with something, then there's more people agreeing with something. Um, if we simplify to a steering committee of five, six, t ten people, then we then we let out all the other thousands, hundreds of thousands of young people who maybe want to have their voice uh, heard. So. Um, I think we should really try to try to like just copy and paste a little bit from the existing communities and within the internet governance society um, to say that um, the community basically makes all the decisions and if the community is not streamlined and cannot agree on something that it just doesn't happen and that's a very direct way but it, it takes long but it's 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 working we see it's working so why should we do something else I think I, I'm hearing like several very good suggestions. So I, I think we, we kind of have a rough uh, agreement that we, we think five to six people is actually a good number for the steering group. Uh, but then I'm, I'm hearing different uh, different views on whether the steering committee should be the one to proposing this specific yield plan or, or should we um, make it uh, and just the steering committee as a open like administrative and council uh, to open to have coordinated consultation for this year plan and, and it should be adopting like a bottom up model which uh, we are trying to engage the multi stakeholders I mean different from different regions of views to really together to discuss about the plan and then the steering committee is just help coordinating this effort uh, so I, I guess because we, we are saying that we need to listen to different voices I guess maybe is there anybody from uh, the uh, Africa uh, Africa or, or from the lack uh, Jeff, uh Use that would like to like comment or do you have any suggestions of uh, feedback? Be before that, I just <laughs> let, let okay. like to add a little yeah, bit for like the so. record. I'm, I'm not against the democratic process, but it's just that sometimes a lot of places like in Africa or, or South America, they may have access problems and they, they may not be as active as we are on the discussion of the entire process of decision making. So I think that the, the role of the steering committee is to take into account the effect of the constraints that they may have and as well as the different barriers that they may have so that they won't be left out in the entire process. So my, my, uh, my point is that we have to, like everybody have to really participate in this process. So yes, yeah, not. Could I try to get, get somebody from Africa to speak as well? I, I think I saw somebody from that part of the region raise hands. Yeah. Or Vo, if you want to come on. <laughs> Florin again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now I'm kind of distracted in my brain. Um, where I'm coming from is when we, when we make decisions via mailing list, and if people from from uh, uh, regions, for example, from Africa, have problems to connect to the ma mailing list, then we are facing a completely different problem. Then we have to start build internet infrastructure. But it's not something we can do. We can support it, but that's something that has to be done from somebody else. Um, so if we use the mailing list as uh, our main decision-making process, um, then I think it's 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 fair to say that that everybody who's connected to the internet right now has the possibility to stay connected because there is mailing is such a simple um, technology it can be used any like always um, and then I want to add up I think the Facebook group is fine to inform members and, f and fine to inform others but uh, via Facebook there should not be any discussion or any uh, decision making ongoing because yeah that it's it's Facebook and we don't know how long Facebook's gonna run, and you know? Yeah, we yeah, we want we we don't want to be like uh, rely on Facebook on m making our decisions. So yeah, we also should make that clear. Is there somebody at the back want to comment as well, or? him a short question uh, then because if you say we can't use Facebook then we can also not use Google groups any other technological thing in a sense that it can also be very fast like dying and there is no archive anymore so I would 
rather state that Facebook can be used, but that there should be a really good archive of decisions, etc., on a more central place somewhere. Because then, otherwise, yeah, it becomes impossible to do any remote participation in a sense. Uh, Anya, Network of European Digital Youth, uh, Youth IGF project. Just to comment on Facebook, um, some people, for political reasons, don't use this tool for communication, but everybody uses emails. We can identify where we want to store the history of emails and come up with solutions again via democratic process, but I support that some people just might not be on Facebook. I support what you just said. My name is Gustavo Paiva from Grupo de Estudos de Direito à Internet at UFRN. And I support what you said. I also understand that some people do not go to Facebook for political reasons which must be respected, at least I think they must. And I would rather work through a mailing list than through Facebook. And I remind you all that IGF has best practice forums and dynamic coalitions that work through mailing lists and it, well, it seems to work out for them. So I think that's to be considered. Thank you. I saw there is a hand at the back, but uh, before before uh, I give the floor to you, I just want to uh, think, say that I, I think this is good dis discussions that uh, I, I, I personally agree as well. Facebook sh uh, probably would be the, just a good outreach too, uh, but I guess we're going to dip right now into talking about where we're making the decision, but I guess we should uh, really go back to discuss whether uh, the role of the steering committee should be like coordination uh, of all these discussions or, or they should be like the one proposing some goals or specific plans. Uh, I think that's, that's the question, but uh, there maybe we'll let the yeah, my name is Alan, I'm from the Youth Lack, and uh, I'd like to suggest uh, some kind of uh, video conferences, and uh, we from the, we made the course for a month, and uh, we used some tools that we can indicate to contact uh, ourselves uh, after the IGF during the, uh, the year, to do not have to wait the, until the next IGF to have um, like um, see ourselves in video conferences where you you can interfere in the other one's speech and uh, add comments, not only just texting or emailing the people. That's it. Viani. Um, thank you. My name is Viani from Anetti and. Uh, my suggestion of platform for discuss about this later could be a group of Google that we can create with the e email account and discuss. We can discuss. We can make a lot of make a lot of things there. Uh, my group of research works in the group of Google, so we can create one and put the email lists in because everyone here has an email and who don't have can create a Google email. So I think that's a good idea to respect for to don't use Facebook for political reasons. So that's my opinion. Just a clarification, we, we do have a mailing list and uh, as on if you go to YCIG.org, you can subscribe to the YCIG mailing list. So we already did uh, have this mailing list and there are some discussion going on, which is though not enough, I think. So uh, yeah, please. Hi, my name is Sonia. I'm from the youth, uh, sorry, Youth IGF Europe. And going back to the steering committee uh, conversation, I also don't think the steering committee should be making decisions on behalf of the youth coalition, but just keeping up with the events. And there, uh, I think Alan said there could be video conferences or maybe well, Skype calls or whatever could be easier, but setting aside the means, I also agree that there should be at least two more maybe meetings between the yearly IGFs because once a year isn't enough. Florian again. Um, okay, I wanna also go back to the discussion about the steering committee. Um, if we start from from the bottom, we say we have a, we have our charter that is right now not sufficient to, to do anything because it's so, so general speaking. So we have to think about who can actually create the charter or adopt the charter, and that can only be us, the community, not a not a 
a few people because we need we need means and defined rules how we elect the the steering committee and this can only be defined in the charter so right now we need to work on the charter and only the community as a whole can work on the charter and then in the charter we can define how the steering community should look like so the way to go is definitely always from the community to somewhere else and at first to the charter and when we have our charter there we can define how the steering community works but it cannot be that the steering community defines the charter because the steering community doesn't have any right to be without a charter saying how the steering community should look like so yeah we need to go from the community charter first yeah. thanks Lauren oh and Mubashi uh, hi Mubashi again from Pakistan uh, so I agree with, I agree with Florin that uh, we should first focus on the steering committee let the steering committee come up with a draft and uh, other people can comment on it then we can finalize the draft Thanks, man. Florin here uh, that that's not what I said um, I, I said that the community has to come up with, with a draft and a proposal what a charter should look like and then the charter then can be defined how the steering community looks like but the steering community cannot be the, the start of the discussion it has to be the community because there is no steering community without a charter defining what the steering community is so we really have to start at the community and not at the steering community because otherwise it like it doesn't make any sense. Um, well sure. uh, I think we should start with a working group that can actually carry out this process, make a draft. Uh, I think it could be a steering committee or it can be another working group. Uh, so it's up to you guys. You form a steering Afrin committee or a working group. No, I think your mic is working. Just switch it on. Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay, awesome. My name is Ephraim. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, I'm one of the MAG members. We're organizing the main session on zero rating. Uh, I just wanted to highlight this discussion we've had before about uh, the charter. Uh, and um, one of the interim, I work with uh, David and Yanis. We have been trying to have uh, this uh, coalition revived uh, for some time now. And it's nice that you have this great representation here. Uh, I'll just go back to this discussion and just give my, my two cents about the whole discussion and about youth and what I think. So on the draft uh, charter, uh, we, we had come up with a working group, but then uh, it didn't really kick off because I don't know if people went home and some of them didn't really have that momentum to, to keep this process going. Uh, we had opened it up for everyone to make suggestions for amendment to the, to the uh, charter that, that is in place right now. And I think we can go back to that Google document and share with all of you uh, what we need uh, for everyone to contribute. We want a very open, inclusive process whereby everyone, the community members, not just a few people deciding this is how things are going to go. We want everyone to contribute and it's public. So when you make your comments and you say, I suggest this is how we need to change, I think that should be open on, on the record. I don't know if that's clear with everyone. We want the process to be very clear and very open and, and inclusive for everybody. Uh, and a challenge uh, that has been have, has occurred, especially with youth involvement in internet governance, has been the lack of funding. Uh, young people cannot be able to raise funds to come from go from meeting to meeting. For example, myself, I'm from Kenya. Uh, coming here, uh, I wasn't sure. I was talking to Yanis and David last week. I wasn't sure I was gonna come here. I had to do a lot of fundraising here and there, wish well wishes and all that, and um, non-profits. And I got my ticket last week on Friday and then left on Saturday. So you can see the kind of challenges even for not just for me. Uh, so this is something which we have continually raised uh, with various people. And uh, today I had a meeting with the Assistant Secretary General for the United Nations uh, over lunch hour. And uh, he, he told me uh, that uh, they are working on this. Uh, this is a it's, uh, our concerns have been reflected uh, uh, 
about young people being involved uh, in, in this space. And one thing that I would like to credit the UN uh, is for the first time they have three people, three young people, all under 25, on the multi stakeholder advisory group. Previously, it's been a group for professors, and uh, it hasn't had young people on, on it. So it's good that they're trying to involve young people. There are avenues, and uh, we, need, we need just need to, to keep this process going forward. And let's keep these discussions online. Join the youth working, uh, the Facebook group, because I see that's the most active and join also um, the mailing list. And then we're gonna put out the, the link and then everyone can comment and we, we that's my personal views. Not, uh, this is not the views of uh, the interim secretariat as it is right now, uh, but uh, it's my personal views that this is how the process should go moving forward, that we need to have uh, this uh, online on uh, a Google Doc. I'm sure all of you can access that. You can work on it from anywhere in the whole world, wherever you are. And then invite other young people. Yeah on this discussion. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, well, thanks everyone for this uh, very good intervention. Uh, so actually, uh, you can see on the screen is uh, we are actually using PiratePad because uh, to be uh, technically uh, correct, uh, Google may not be everywhere. I mean, not everywhere can assess it actually <laughs> to be correct. Uh, so uh, we're, we're using PiratePad for this open consultation and uh, there is a link that uh, uh, David has uh, shared in the mailing list as well as on Facebook before uh, for, for this, uh, which Bianca shared before. And actually we can share it to the Facebook group as well and the mailing list as well again. Uh, so we are opening the, so actually the consultation uh, we target uh, that we can uh, start from uh, last, we, we had our call on the 7th, so we start on that and then we hope to actually end this consultation on the 21st so that we can turn around something that we can really uh, make our process going and we don't spend too much time on this I don't although this is a very important process uh, David um, adding on this uh, because for the discussion about uh, how we can approach different uh, people from the community I think it's very important to have the bottom-up approach uh, to make our community be to engage um, I think for this discussion is also about the role of uh, the steering committee they got a responsibility to to consult all the members uh, ideas and, and doing some consultations on, on what is happening by all means not only by like mailing this but they should do their best on like Facebook uh, or doing pirate pads or even like Google Map, uh, Google no, Google ad uh, those kind of Google document things. Um, it is one of the responsibilities. I think uh, it's of everyone's uh, consensus on, on, on the topic. Um, but before, uh, before we go through um, uh, the power pack for the question, I think uh, I saw Bianca has raised up his, her hand. Um, can, I, can we get Bianca from remote to speak on behalf? Uh, but I'll let you know how to uh, Bianca, are you connected on audio or technical team? Do you think you can get her on the audio? Can you hear me? If Bianca, you're speaking, then we're not hearing, or else maybe you can just type it in chat if you cannot speak. Speaking, Bianca. So maybe we should wait a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the can has also talked about, um, because for some of you have also mentioned about uh, they should have meetings um, between uh, the IGF meetings for every time, because it's one year time for IGF. Um, we already doing some kind of call to doing the coordination work. Um, we have already got three um, meetings for in, in, in period of time during this year uh, to coordinate how we should done in this IGF. Um, but I think you guys have made a very good point that uh, there's also one of the uh, mission and, and, and the responsibility of the steering committee to doing this kind of consultation and, and regularly, regularly have the meetings with uh, the members to make things going and make sure everything uh, is running well. Um, Bianca, can you try to talk again? I think the host here give you the right. I think it's a uh, audio issue within the room is, can we project the voice from the Webex? Uh, 
Hakim, you have a comment? Yeah, maybe in the meantime, um, it's good. I would like to know, because we're now with kind of six or ten of us talking, but there are a lot more people in the room. So maybe can we can I propose that we that you ask us the questions whether we would like a steering committee that is um, more um, doing proposals and, and formulating doing work on our own or more a communication based um, yeah just communicating what's happening etc. So th these two kind of steering committees that you asked the uh, us. You want to do a show of hands? Yeah, a show of hands. Yeah, just to get like to see. Okay, so taking your suggestion, uh, if, I mean, if, uh, why, why don't we, yeah, why don't we do this? Uh, I guess we have discussed about the, uh, uh, the, whether the road of the steering committee to be just uh, coordination kind of and com organizing the calls and et cetera, or they should be the one pr proposing a draft of those uh, goals and, uh, and year plan. So if you think is, it should be the coordination role, can you like have a show of your hands? Or how do you want to do that? No, oh, you can. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think thanks, Yannis, for doing. <laughs> thanks, Yannis, for doing those kind of uh, uh, conclusion work on 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 our discussion. I think uh, it's very good to to know everyone's point of views on how you think uh, the steering committee should be, um, because Yannis has just mentioned about uh, our discussion outcome for for. Um, past like half hours uh, is we think that steering committee should be uh, more like to have the road on coordination in, instead of doing some kind of propo proposing the action plans because it need to be bottoms up and with community uh, engagement in, in, in a sense uh, doing some consultation from the members but not um, but not having the powers to doing all the stuff um, this is the very first thing um, on the coordination but not doing the proposing uh, the second one is they should have, uh, by all means, they should reach out to members for consultation, uh, for getting their feedbacks and connecting their voice. Uh, it should be the second thing um, the steering committee should, should be. Um, the first thing I think you guys have also mentioned is about the archive things. I, um, previously, I, I think for, uh, for the chapter is also written down. Uh, for all the meetings and uh, the minutes should be keeping record and posted on the website. Uh, the archive things is very important role that uh, the student committee should done as a um, secretary role. So I think is uh, these three um, areas is what we have uh, mentioned in previous time. Um, but I'm taking Pim's suggestion on on doing some rough consensus uh, on uh, the discussion outcomes. Uh, as I just mentioned about the three roles um, we have discussed in these half hours, I would just like to uh, note everyone to show your hands if you think uh, our, uh, our summaries on, on these three points is not accurate or is not uh, appropriate enough, you can just raise your hand and doing some modification. Um, please uh, just raise your hand if you, you think it's not appropriate or, or it's not accurate. Okay, so I think from the point of view of rough consensus, if there is no objection on these discussion outcomes, I will see this as our consent of our groups. Um, and, um, yep. Well, I mean, uh, actually, I think, uh, why don't we, uh, I mean, uh, this, this would be a kind of uh, some of the discussions uh, come out of this meeting, but I guess we still have to feed into this uh, consultation process. I guess we can try to like uh, draft something from, from this uh, summary and then put it into the document as well. But uh, why, don't we, why don't we show the power pad again and then we kind of uh, go through and show everyone what, what are the questions raised in the, in the, uh, in the process so that uh, everyone can continue the thinking and then they can, they can comment uh, offline, I mean, after, after this meeting as well. And then we can go into talking about like how we can want to go forward to really adopt and this process. Uh, okay, Mubashi, uh, please. Uh, I think at the moment we should uh, work. Uh, we should do some discussion on planning uh, our meetings. 
so that we can plan and discuss uh, on remotely through WebEx uh, or through Adobe so that uh, we may discuss some issues at the runtime. Yeah. It can uh, be quarterly or maybe after six months. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's what I guess we have to uh, discuss next. How, after the consultation, how do we want to turn around this document or really like, agree on this is what we want from the, I mean, to, to be added to the charter and how this process and how many meetings we want to meet to discuss about this. Uh, so, but before going into that, I, I think I would like to briefly go through this uh, questions uh, raised in the uh, power pad right now so that everybody has a sense of where we are and what we have to discuss like offline as well yeah maybe i take the mic to do so um from the consultation right now we got a few questions uh for the first very first part is about the election um because we like to doing some sustainable uh, leadership in the ycig that's why we're doing uh the foreign question uh to doing the consult consultation um first is about who can vote and does all members have the voting rights um is about the openness things. Um, for the second question, it will be about how should the election process be for the steering committee? And the f sorry, I skipped one. Uh, yeah, it's setting up the steering committee things. Um, and the third one is what is the timeline for the election process? Because uh, as we know, we got every uh, years of YIGF meeting, uh, not YIGF, YCIG meeting. Um, that's why you need to have uh, procedures on doing this election stuff. So for the following question, will be the timeline for election process. Um, followed by is, do we need nom nomination? And also about the responsibility of the steering committee, as we have discussed. Um, Indeed, we also got some follow-up question. Uh, this kind of question is uh, uh, is, uh, is is somehow the question we have discussed in in the call before we come to uh, the YCIG meetings and in, in uh, IGF. Is about how does the open process mean? Uh, define the characteristic, then we can able to like uh, enhance in the futures. I think it's important to to see how we can make the process to be open and as you guys have mentioned about uh, we should have those kind of bottom-up approach and, and uh, in touch with the community, I mean the youth communities on, on doing it and stuff. So open process is very uh, in our mind on how we can make it done. Um, for the futures, we also think about we should have some guiding principles for YCIG uh, on, on the stuff like the openness, transparency, and, and how we can engage uh, people to join. I think this kind of question is some follow-up question on top of the election process. Yep, and you can see uh, due to our discussion in, in before we come to I ICIG meetings, um, we have set the consultation date uh, from 7th to 21, which is uh, two weeks time. Um, it's still open for everyone to doing the consultation. So we will share this again in the Facebook group and also in the mailing list. Just feel free to give us your comments and, and we will doing those kinds of documentation work afterwards. Uh, okay, so I, I guess this just give a brief scope of, of uh, what we have to discuss about, I mean, offline out of this meeting and then, uh, uh, but then I, I guess from uh, we should uh, since we only have have an hour left, I guess we should discuss about the way forward and the next step, like how we want to move forward with this uh, this charter or, or this election process. And uh, there is a suggestion actually uh, raising the remote uh, from the remote uh, track. Uh, so it was actually raised by Martin uh, from the network of European Digital Youth. So he said the YCIG has a charter. What it does not have as a steering committee. The most feasible way would be to select a preliminary steering committee at, IG, uh, at IGF along the rules of the charter under 30 and then give them the mandate to facilitate the discussion to rework the charter and enable young people to host the discussion instead of sitting them into the process discussing statutes for a forum they're not familiar with. So I guess it's a question uh, right now whether we want to uh, 
have this preliminary steering committee uh, here or, or a working group to carry out this process to organize calls further after this meeting to discuss about this plan. Any comments? Mubash. Yeah, I think uh, the entire committee should be there to look after all the process, uh, comments, as elections. The role of interim committee is important. Interim committee can be any uh, comprising a few members, four to five members. But uh, further for elections, we can have representation from the regions. We can compose. We can discuss it offline. Okay, Lauren. Um, for the record, Florin again. Um, and uh, Pip just showed me the proposal part that everybody can see now in, 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 in blue. Uh, maybe we can get it a little bigger, yeah. Um, <coughs> in general, I think there is in the room uh, an, an agreement that we need as a kind of working group to work on the, ch uh, on the charter. So, um, but we cannot map it and decide anything in this room. We really have to do it uh, via the mailing list. So, I would say an, an open call via the mailing list for people who want to join a working group. Um, this working group is then allowed to uh, um, rework the, chat, the, the charter, which or a draft of the charter. For this charter, for this draft of, this, of the charter, then we go in an open comment round where everybody can again comment and, and bring their suggestions in. And with this process, we should come to a a final charter that can then be used to actually elect the steering group, and then we can start working. Yeah. yeah for the record, Pim, maybe to clarify that that keeps the discussion of okay, how does election process and how do we need a preliminary steering committee, etc., away from this meeting. But then we just say okay, everyone can sign up for uh, uh, step one. Everyone can sign up to get into a working group. The working group, uh, which I thought was a very good idea from the uh, from the audience, um, the working group creates um, um, a call in a mailing list for who. Uh, no, sorry, the organization or uh, you guys, the organization uh, organization of today, uh, create a call for the mailing list to create a working group. Everyone can participate in a working group. If there are a lot of people, uh, we make sub working groups to work on the charter. There is a step two is there is a draft charter that everyone in step three can uh, give input on. Step four is that by the mailing list, which is the most political, neutral way uh, a vote is done on that specific charter. So do we agree or not? Do we change it? And then uh, the fifth is that via the charter, the steering committee uh, is proposed and elected uh, according as agreed by the whole community. Thanks, Pim and Lauren, for the really good suggestion and proposal. Uh, so is any is there any uh, other comments or objection to this proposal? I think so. The next step, if, if there is no like other opinion, I, I guess we would have to set up a working group and see if in this room anybody w would like to volunteer to join this working group to review the charter and also like to, I think the main working group uh, output would be to really organize calls for further consultation as well. If someone wants to volunteer, how how will be the work? Uh, what the person exactly has to do, or how the person is going to participate? I maybe I answer this question first. Uh, for the work you need to done is uh, first to join the call. Uh, the secondly, because I think you mainly from uh, the youth budget program, if um, you are on behalf, uh, you should like to doing some consultation among your your peers to review the chapters. Uh, but in the other sense, I, I'm just thinking is for the working group because we are now doing some consultation on on uh, on the pilot pack. Uh, they will be taking the secretary role to uh, consolidate all the things into a clear document because it's uh, just with those kind of. Um, comments in, 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 in many ways is a hard 
somehow is hard to read. So I think he's more taking the editor's role to uh, to doing the work uh, on these two sets, on editing role uh, and also on the consultation role. Thank you. I may have interest in volunteering for the, the working group, but I would like to read the charter first. So can I, would it be possible for, for me to volunteer later for the, the, the groups? Or does it have to be now? Uh, no, actually, sorry, I, I should make myself clear. Uh, okay, so I guess what uh, we have to do next is we will send uh, open uh, like call for volunteers to the working group in the mailing list and Facebook group. And then so we said our how long do you think we should open this volunteer period to be like a week or? Okay, so we'll open uh, two weeks, like so people travel back home. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and then read the charter. Okay, so we'll open a two weeks uh, window for people to volunteer to join this working group, which the goal is to define the process and then do the editing of this uh, document on the power pack uh, after organizing calls and consultations with our members through mailing lists and Facebook and everything, I mean. And then, uh, we'll prov and then the uh, working group has to provide our like, clean version of the document and then to circulate to the mailing list again for members to adopt and agree on. So is that clear and is is the room okay with this addition? I see nods of hand ahead. Uh, okay, uh, so if that's, I, I guess that would be an action item for, for us and yeah. You guys as we open for two uh, more weeks for, um, for joining working group. So I would suggest the consultation period should be extended a bit. Um, hopefully maybe extend two more weeks uh, in a sense to to um, doing more consultation by the Liu working group members. Actually, I, I am thinking the, because the two weeks is for forming the working group, should we let the working group to further define the consultation period? Agree? Okay, cool. So I think we have done with the process. So we move to uh, the other agenda. Oh, is there any other comments on this particular uh, steering committee discussion before we move on? Okay, no. Oh, then oh we sorry. Maybe just yeah. a small Please. suggestion because um, the current charter, a lot of terms are poorly defined. So I think that um, just for the record, maybe the working group can uh, work on the definition of for instance, what is meant by open, as you've mentioned, I think that um, it, it's, yeah, they, they have to make it clear, like, what they mean in the charter. It's just a small suggestion. Thank you, Lex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I don't do so, too. <laughs> um, okay, so let me just move to the other session if there's no more comments um okay so for the other session i would like to do now is about the to setting up sorry i firstly stopped sharing um so reading from our agenda it should be the way to move forward for the next while uh, for the next igf because for this year we have done the work like uh, the Lubies, uh, ABC for uh, the ABC for Lubies, and also we, ha we have done um, uh, the youth mentorship uh, meetup. Um, I think many of you have already joined uh, the youth meetup and, and also have a look on the ABC online. Um, I would like to um, uh, like to invite your views and, and collecting your views on what we can done uh, next for uh, the IGF that we can engage more youth um, and getting them to be well prepared for their meetings. Um, I, for this session, I will welcome feedbacks on the two mentioned uh, activities we have done in this IGF. And for the other area is we welcome any comments and suggestions for the next IGF. Should we just keep these two models to be uh, organized in the next one? Or is there is any modification should be needed? Uh, we welcome for to raise questions. Um, uh, maybe 
I'm Felix again. Uh, maybe I'll start off with uh, another small suggestion is that for the remote participation, um, a lot of times we just throw out, throw out a, a single link and then um, without much explanation and um, without um, adjusting the time differences and, and stuff. So it would be kind of hard for our peers, especially youth that are not coming to the IGF, to really participate in, in the, the remote conference. So I think that um, we can have a more comprehensive, let's say, um, a Google file that um, outlines kind of the background of the workshops and um, kind of detailed instructions on how to participate in the remote uh, participation because um, we represent that mission and um, some amb ambassadors may have some problems in, in uh, the remote participation. So th they, they wanted to join, but um, there are all sort of um, different technical difficulties that um, constrained the, the access. Thank you. Okay, uh, just on this, on, on the activities, um, this is something that, uh, I don't know, I, I just wanted to flout out to you guys and I, I hope you're going to support this idea. Um, the current mandate of the IGF is being renewed, I'm sure all of you know about that. And uh, today during uh, the discussions with uh, the Assistant Secretary General uh, of the UN, uh, I talked about having it in writing about the UN commitment to youth uh, in internet governance discussions. And um, they suggested that we, 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 do, we do a formal process of writing to them about, about this. And I was thinking, uh, right now the WC Zero draft uh, doesn't really focus that much on youth. And um, part of the suggestion is um, if it's possible, uh, we come up with a public uh, public uh, Google Doc, and then we can look at the WC Zero draft and uh, provide, it. this one is a very short deadline, I think it's a week, and it would require some people to volunteer their time. Uh, what we would want uh, the UN uh, WC uh, ambassadors, the two of them who are uh, co-facilitating the annual discussions, to take into account on youth issues. It's been hard to, to have this discussion about youth because uh, and talking to also to past uh, YCIG members uh, is the, the fact that this uh, this uh, discussion moves from different places to different places. We need people who are committed to just uh, volunteer their time and come up with like a short statement. I don't know if that is because I was looking at the previous activities of the YCIG within the current charter as it is. Um, it is allowed to do that, and in the past they have released statements. And uh, I, I was just thinking, we, we need to, to contribute to this uh, zero draft before the deadline. I don't know if that's something anyone would want to join me in, because um, I'm willing to set up some time uh, and just come up. It's, it's really been something long, this a short statement, maybe a page or two, if that's okay. Yeah, th that's my suggestion on what has happened right now, taking into account the kind of uh, support that the IGF has done for these years, uh, for us to have the youth meetup, for us to have young people from Latin America join us at this IGF, and for this continuity to be there for next year's IGF uh, in Mexico, if it is going to be renewed, uh, we just need to come up with like a statement or something. I don't know, it's just something I wanted to, to raise out, out there. And then, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, but I do have a, a small question on the, the youth statement because um, I'm here not because I'm a youth. I'm here because I'm a part of the internet. So um, why do we have to specifically label ourselves as youth and say that we have to participate because we are youth? It's just a question because I'm not so sure what you mean by the statement. Yeah, um, on this, uh, the reason I wanted to, to raise out this is, uh, for example, take, take into account uh, the amount of young people that you've seen, not just in this IGF, but in other IGFs. Uh, the youth are the majority of the internet users across the world. 
But then when it comes to decisions on how the internet is governed, freedom of expression online, privacy issues online, like all, all these issues online uh, that affects young people, we are not involved in the discussions. I, I, I was just thinking, like, we need to push much further. Like, the current mandate of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, if I may just go to Article 7 of the current charter, it says, activities of the Dynamic Youth Coalition will, will include but not limited to advocacy for youth participation and youth leadership at IGFs, representing youth participation in IGF workshops and panels, participating actively in discussions and debates on youth issues, and providing recommendations to stakeholders in the field of internet governance and the organizers of IGF regarding the involvement of young people. So I was just going back to our charter that this is within our mandate and we don't take this uh, Article 7 of our charter very uh, actively. We need to, to, to reactivate that Article 7 because it was being used by the previous committees. I don't know, I was just thinking. Thank okay, you. thank you. I think, I think that, that there lies a question whether the statement will be representing YCIG as a uh, like consensus or or but this statement will be uh, I mean who who is writing this statement? So I, I think if 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 we agree that it will be something from the YCIG then we have to define I mean we have to make like an uh, open process on, on developing this as well. So I guess the question is how do we want to do this or do we just want to be like a kind of volunteer to join you to like to work on that or Hello, Florian here. Um, yeah, I fully can agree with you. I think it's important to to uh, produce some kind of statement, even if it's uh, on a certain time pressure. And we actually yeah, we sh should work on the on the on the chapter and stuff. But I think it's it's really necessary to make clear that the young people are, are care about it. So um, I would I would suggest that we, we use the mailing list again to. Um, uh, decide on how we are going to do this because right now we here we cannot decide we can only discuss. Um, but I certainly think it's a good idea to create an online document, even if it's not Google, as you said, um, to keep it really um, accessible by, for everybody, um, and to create a statement that everybody can agree with. And then maybe if if the time allows it, send it back to the members via the mailing list again um, to get the confirmation of everybody and then we can publish it. So I think it should be possible to do this in one week. Yeah. No, it's just, just saw the hand sorry. in the back. Um, we let the new uh, voice to speak first. Yep. Uh, I'm going to talk okay. about what he was talking about. Um, Start, so. Because I, I think you know Daniel, but uh, the most part of the people doesn't know yet. Uh, we are from the youth lag from Latin America Caribbean. We've made a uh, youth observatory. We have a Facebook account. For for now, it's only written in uh, Spanish and uh, Portuguese. But we have a declaration made in English too, also in English, and uh, we can send you the link. It's in, in Google Docs, so everybody uh, can give suggestions because we we are trying to make it an international document. For now, it's it's from Latin America because we are from Latin America, but we want to spread ideas and we want to make agreements. We uh, I've talked to some people from other countries, like uh, French speakers' countries, to translate it into France, into French or other languages because we want to spread our ideas and we want to listen w what people want to tell us. So I think it's very important to, to do agreements with the youth coalition from you, from Asia. So it's important. And I, my, I, w I had a doubt uh, about the mailing list. It is uh, still exists, yeah? Yeah. And uh, we have signed and we are going to participate in the mailing list too, yeah? Okay. Good. Do you want to talk? So okay, yeah. the, the, he's going to complement the, the speech about the Internet Observatory, uh, the, the Youth Observatory. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to complement what he said. Uh, 
as you said, we have the, uh, our statement, our declaration of uh, the youth for Latin American and Caribbean, but the original idea with the observatory and the declaration was to expand and make contact with all other youth groups around the world. So maybe uh, in the future, really soon, we can expand on that de declaration to make it uh, global, uh, view upon it, listen to everyone uh, from other groups, as well as make a, a, a global youth observatory to make content for youth from youth. Because uh, just like Efren said, uh, we're most of the, the population on the internet, but we're not involved in the decisions. And sometimes the way people make decisions and publish content regarding internet governance is not made in a, a kind of language or an approach suitable for young people. So we have to take uh, upon arms to uh, do this all ourselves to other youth to spread the word. So I think it would be a nice idea to if everyone could take a look at our, at our declaration and maybe use it as a, a reference point or a, to build upon it. Thank you for your question. Uh, we got a remote participation uh, question. It's ready. Please go ahead. Um, seems is we got some question. Um, um, while we are waiting, we have another opinion. Yeah. Uh, I'll come down the front. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Nick. I uh, I'm from the UK government, and uh, first of all, I was really uh, I was really pleased to see I'm still young enough to uh, be able to join the youth IGF, <laughs> which is great. Um, uh, and also you guys organize the best after parties uh, in the IGF, so uh, definitely well done for that. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say a, a couple of things, and I, I picked up on just a couple of uh, those last points about um, sort of participation and feeling involved in, uh, in, in, the, in these kind of processes. Um, there's, also, there's also the national IGFs, um, which are open for, uh, for everyone to participate. Um, you know, uh, the young people included. Um, we have a, a national IGF in the UK, um, which, uh, which was held at, at Chatham House in London uh, back in June. And it was noted there um, that th there was a distinct lack of young people. Um, and it's cer certainly something I picked up on. Um, and I'd really like to, um, I'd like to uh, see change and see uh, more young people at next year's uh, uh, national IGF in the UK. Um, so um, uh, w what I'm going to do is uh, share my uh, share my details, uh, my contact details with um, uh, with the guys here, and um, uh, and I'd very much um, like to sort of uh, get the thoughts and ideas of the people in this room uh, as to how we as a government can reach out and engage um, with you guys. So it's not just about uh, the young people having to get involved. There's a two-way dialogue here uh, coming from you know coming from governments as well and how we can get you involved in our, in our national processes, which feed our thinking as, uh, as governments as part of our multi-stakeholder approach to how we can then sort of take your considerations and feed those in um, to, uh, to the, uh, the, the, uh, the recommendations that we make as governments uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in some of these issues. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank you very much. I think you've got a great thing here. And, um, and I'd be very keen to uh, sort of see how I can help get you guys involved as well. Um, so thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, because of time, I see two, um, maybe three hands from Anya. Uh, okay, uh, we got two hands. From the very first is from the back, at the back, and then in the front. Uh, after these two questions, I'll close the session. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Auke from uh, Nuri and the Dutch delegation. Um, first of all, I want to reject on the English guy um, because he was telling that this is a great meeting. I disagree. I thought we had a clear agenda about how um, we would dis discuss some items, but we have only talked about the definition, definition of what the steering committee is looking like. B but the definition is just in dictionaries. 
that what have we actually created right now? Because I think this is a waste of time. Thank you for your question. I think it's very important to get you to engage uh, in the process to make it meaningful. And the other question from in back, in, in front. Yeah, I just like to remind you that we, uh, besides uh, the youth, uh, the IGF, the Internet Governance Forum, the international one, we have a lot of national ones that we could uh, participate in a remote way, like in Bangladesh, Indonesia, Benin. So we could search, we could lo uh, try to learn, mo uh, know more about them and to join it to and give our participation to make it um, more international because they, these, these are preparation to the international one. So it's important to have our engagement there too. Okay. Uh, just to answer uh, his question, I, I see he's, uh, he's um, about to leave and the time is almost up. Um, on why we will not have uh, an interim uh, a steering committee right now is because we want to have this process uh, to, to, to maybe have an election over the internet if possible, like other coalitions, uh, they do the, the elections over the internet and involve everyone who's not here. Uh, because if we do it here right now, we're not gonna have everybody involved, even those who maybe did not have the finances to be here. Uh, so that's, that's just to answer, like we need to take care of the remote, uh, we need to do this remotely and that's why we, uh, I would suggest seeking help from, let's say, other people who do these elections, non-commercial user consistency, best bits network, this kind of network which do these things remotely. Uh, they have experience and they have the infrastructure and I'm sure some of them will be willing to uh, donate their uh, infrastructure, um, like uh, the expertise on, on, on facilitating such kind of an uh, election electronic just, just to answer he, he wanted the elections right now he said it's a waste of time if we postpone it so i just wanted to say that we need to uh, to do this over the internet and seek help from others so that can include others thank you okay so for the time limit i just round up the session um could there be more participation just so the slide uh no sorry uh, the technical guy just so the slide um hand raised at the back. Okay, we, um, the hand at the back, we got your last chance to have like 30 seconds to speak up. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sara from Guatemala. We met yesterday at the party with everyone. Uh, <laughs> I have like a social announcement. Uh, we are like hosting another after party in the same place. <laughs> 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 so bring money, beers, and friends, and everything. So we can have this conversation in another field, you know, more relaxed and everything. <laughs> just chill out. Cool. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so I just thought the round up. Um, could the table guys just show just like um, I got a few link for uh, everyone um, for the wrap up. Um, about the way to move forward. Um, they got a kind of suggestion on how we can doing the more participation more efficiently. Um, hopefully th this can be done for next year. I think it's really one of the goal. Uh, and the other thing is about the statement stuff. Um, FM has raised the question and, and raised the ideas of having a statement. I know that uh, for the, Lat uh, uh, the Latin American uh, IGF, youth IGF, um, group, you also got the declaration and statement have already been done. I think you guys can Firstly, add on um, the, the mailing list, and we can keep the discussion online um, to keep everything running. Uh, make sure the process will be open to all, and, and because it is uh, for that creation, I think it's, uh, and also it's for a statement uh, on behalf of youth, I think uh, it should be like bottom up support and, and with the community engagement. Um, you can see from the link, there are a few information to share. For the very first is the Facebook. Um, the Facebook group um, is an informal way to communication. Uh, this is Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, it's a very long work. You can just type it and you can join the group and we can have discussion there. Uh, but at the same time, we got a mailing list. The mailing list is mainly doing some archive things. Uh, you can share your documents and, and, and your opinions there. We will keep having check on mailing list. So you can go to the mailing list for more information and to keep everyone in touch, no matters on uh, the statement stuff and also the other, other things to, to get 
uh, this question. Um, and the first thing is about on the website, you can go to the website to, to have a look. Uh, they got some information and also the chapter is on it. And the last one is the uh, IGF ABC for newbies. Um, I do the promotion and, and I think you guys got uh, the postcard. Uh, this is the very first initiative we're working on uh, for engaging newbies. Uh, they also got some information of YCIT. You can go to the website to have a look. Um, the other stuff is about um, about an, an, an announcement. Um, for the joint collaboration of YCIG, we tomorrow have another session, uh, workshop 191. That will be uh, that will be in room seven at 11 o'clock. Um, the main purpose is uh, we wish to have the youth from different areas to join the meetings to to like somehow like downloading your your opinions on how the IGF can be more youth friendly and the other stuff is about how uh, the indeed is about um, any internet governance uh, issue you are concerned about. Uh, after that, we can doing some outcome documents uh, uh, as um, as one of the very important outcomes for uh, the workshop tomorrow. So here, I would like to send an invitation to you all. Uh, please join us tomorrow morning at 11. Um, everyone can still attend after the party tonight. Uh, <laughs> it will be in, in workshop seven, workshop room seven. And just to add, uh, yeah, that's how we'll start the process of coming up with a statement. We'll take into account the statements which have been made before by uh, regional youth IGFs, uh, national IGFs, and uh, yeah, and then there is way we're, we're going to come up with with uh, that's the one of the outcomes uh, because it's a practicum. Uh, we're going to uh, have different stakeholders. Uh, we're going to like do a mock. I know most of you have participated in um, model United Nations type of debates, so we're going to have civil society, private sector, like we're going to divide ourselves into different stakeholders and then come up with a joint statement, if that's okay. And then, uh, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So see you tomorrow. It's 90 minutes just like today. And please stand up early, come up with friends. Uh, I'm glad we are full. Then please leave your contacts with us. Um, there was a paper going around. Uh, we want to include in all the communications and uh, add you to the discussions. Uh, there's some discussions with so some contacts we had during last year's IGF in Turkey and other IGF. So we need just to keep this discussion going and connect to other people who participate in this people. So if you've not left your contacts, leave your contacts with us. See you tonight. See you tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, 11 p.m. Yeah, excuse yeah, me. Awesome. Yeah. Excuse me. Let's Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I, uh, you also got some new It's just to remind you that our declaration is totally open to receive suggestions and all opinions because we want to make it better and better. So. If you can add suggestions to it, we are going to receive in a very good way. So thank you for your participation. Yeah, thank you. And for tomorrow workshop, we've got a session for you to describe about your decoration. OK, once again, thanks everyone for coming. For our action items, we were doing, um, <laughs> yeah, of course, the very first thing is party. <laughs> and the other things, we would uh, keep everyone on check on uh, the mailing list. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.